Well, hey, that, that that's a really good question. And uh, that has really prompted us to do more digging and trying to find out what are these spatial and landscape, landscape characteristics that are more often associated with where we're seeing these buck bedding areas. But, you know, I, I, I simply think they're strategic locations. Uh, I think as Dan mentioned, uh, there's probably not as much of a human footprint or a signature of humans being there a lot. I think it's also strategic regarding using all of the buck's senses. So vision, hearing, and smell. And when you look at some of these spots, let's go to the, the very southern part there where we have one, two, and four visits. I don't know how you're going to get in. Let, let's just say you wanted to try to walk in on that buck and shoot it with a rifle. I, I don't know how you're going to do that. Uh, you, Can I interrupt you real quick? Do you, do you happen to sure. know what um, if there was a crop in this field at the time and what it was? I, I know I'm asking a lot there. Uh, this would have been in December. Um, so I, I do not think so. It is possible in my neck of the woods down here that it could have been a cover crop, but most likely it was fallow. And then what, one more quick question. What's typically in the study area? What's the prevailing wind or winds? Either out of the north or out of the south. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so go, go ahead and then I'll, I'll ask or I'll tell you why I asked those questions in a minute. Yeah, well, I think I was just wrapping up there that that even for us looking there, uh, in this case, uh, primarily vision, if you're on that that more southerly spot there, it, it's just going to be very difficult for a predator or in this case, a human or a hunter to be able to approach and and kill that buck. Uh, it's going to be difficult to get in there. Then if you move north into that bigger timbered part, you notice we're typically on edges there where we're, we're bedded. And so I'm just thinking, and this is what we want to go through all of the data and input the wind and look at things like that to figure out if it is ideally located to where there's either a barrier to the buck's side or back but where it can utilize both sense of smell and then also vision so that it can feel protected. 